In at number six is Charlton Athletic. In at five is Scunthorpe United. At four is Red Hot Rotherham. Down two places to number three is Wigan Athletic. Down one place to number two is Shrewsbury Town. But number one for this week is Blackburn Rovers, baby. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review, this time picking apart the latest cup final, and that was Blackburn Rovers against Berry at Ewood Park, and it ended 2-0. Before I get into the thick of things, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you back up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, baby. Oh, word of warning, I'm not a fan of the long hair. So, yeah, I do apologise for the get-up, but, hey, it's... Uh, all in a good cause, that's right, because we are top of the table for the first time since 2012 uh, in whatever respective league that statistic refers to. But yes, it feels great. It might only be for 24 hours because Shrewsbury are in action uh, tomorrow, but the pressure is now on them. Anyway, let's get to more about the match. It ended up being Rovers 2, Berry nil. Graham and Armstrong scoring in the second half. Graham on the 51st minute. And Armstrong on the 67th minute. And boy, was it a tale of two halves. The first half was not a primetime advertisement for football or Rovers. It was that dire. And uh, it should never be seen again. In fact, we should just scrap that first half of football and wipe it from our memories. Because that's how hideous it was. Anyway, the second half, it was a, a completely different story. The words of uh, Tony Mowbray still ringing in the players' ears as they came out guns blazing Danny Graham on the score sheet. On the 51st minute, uh, he's now scored, I think, 13 goals in uh, for the for Rovers this season. He is now, I think, depends on where you look at it, he might be top goal scorer for Rovers. He might be joint with Dak. Depends on where you look at it. Anyway, Armstrong, my main buddy, Stretch, got his fourth in three games. Uh, and let's take a look at the statistics itself. And look at this, 8% possession for Rovers, 32% for Berry, 10 shots for Rovers, 12 for Berry. And look how close this was. Four apiece shots on targets for both Blackburn and Berry. Rovers dominating the corners with 10 to 4. And we were the dirty side. Let's take a look at the formations and the starting game. This is where it went a little bit hinky for Rovers. We, uh, well, Mowbray mixed it up a bit. I'm, gonna, I'm not taking any credit whatsoever. It was Mowbray who mixed it up a bit with this 5-2-3 formation or 5-3-2. Uh, depends how you look at it. Um, but yes, it just never worked out for Rovers, and then he mixed it up in the second half, reverting back to four at the back, uh, and uh, the rest of the guys pulling forward. Anyway, uh, Ryan and goal, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Bell, Smallwood, Evans, Dak, and Armstrong. Uh, I know I know where he was going with this, Mowbray. He's, he's trying to include all his main players, kind of trying to give them more game time, but it just didn't work out. Uh, it was definitely a more uh, familiar and fluent Rovers in the second half, uh, the first half was just so unbelievable. So much space. I felt there was so much space for Berry to try and carve themselves some opportunities. And they were unlucky not to, not to get anything from the uh, match themselves. But thankfully, Rovers dug in. But, but, oh my goodness. Thankfully, Rovers dug in and they got the, the two goals and the three points, which moves them back to the top. Well, not back to the top, to the top of the table for the first time this season. And anyway, let's take a look at my match ratings. It's not very good reading, but uh, it's, it's, it's a plain old Jane Rovers, but a couple of standouts in there. Ryan with a six, Lenahan six, Mulgrew with a seven, William with a six, Bennett with a six, Bell with a six, Smallwood with a six, Evans with a five, Dak with an eight, Armstrong with a seven. And Graham with a seven. Yes, I think Smallwood had one of his worst games in a rover shirt. Bennett on that wing back role. I don't think it was it was ideally suited. I don't think his crossing was good. And then when they introduced Nayimbi in the second half, felt felt a little bit more uniformed at the back. But again, he did make some a couple of little errors which had me, you know, holding my heart in my mouth sort of thing. Anyway, let's take a look at our visitors. They lined up like this in a traditional 4-4-2. Connor Ripley in goal. Edwards, Cameron, Clark, Lee, Ishmael, Laurent. Uh, Dan's ex Rover, Mayer, Miller, and Bun. So it wasn't a great evening's football for Rovers, but we got the job done. We got the two goals, and we got the three points, and we got top spot. And again, I said it earlier, it might only be for 24 hours, but now the pressure moves onto Shrewsbury's shoulders. They play uh, Tuesday night 
I'm not sure who they play. I think it's Gillingham, actually, Bradley Dack's old club. So maybe we can get on the old dog and bone and get call in a few favours. And maybe just maybe if they can trip Shrewsbury up, uh, then this victory will be even more sweeter as we go into the weekend's uh, fixtures. I think we take on Walsall at their place in away days for the away fans, the mighty Roberts. Now you've heard what I've had to say about the match, just a little bit anyway, but what has the gaffer been saying? Let's take a listen to what he said shortly after the final whistle. Well, I think the points were all important. We weren't at our most fluent, as we could see. I think very frustrated the shape that we played tonight. The, the, the midfield, the defensive midfield players sat on our two attacking players Armstrong and Dak and, and didn't give much room for staff um, the strikers dropped onto our midfield players and made life really difficult to get through with any fluency you know again with total respect the pitch is, is a bit bobbly at this time of year and it's very difficult we decided at half time to go a bit longer a bit more direct playing to Danny Moore if we could and push extra bodies forward we just what you call inverted the triangle in midfield rather than playing uh, one ten, we played two tens and pushed one and had one sitting. We did it against Oldham, a similar sort of formation that we changed to, and ultimately we got the job done. Um, I personally a bit frustrated we weren't as fluent as we can be, and yet it doesn't really matter standing here. We've won two nil, delighted with the clean sheet, delighted for the defenders and the goalkeeper, um, and it's just one hurdle we've just jumped over and we've got to keep going. So we've come to expect it, and we we totally respect Bradley has uh, has been doing it all year for us. And um, I think once he's acclimatised and settled in to the group and to the squad, he's um, he's shown what a talent he is. He just has to keep it going now and see if he can play his part in in the next 13 games to see how many wins we can get. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't want to stand here and build Bradley up or one player up too much. I think you know I thought Jack Payne was amazing when he came on. You know what? You know, he must be sitting in there thinking, "How oh, do I not get in the team?" And, um, and 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 I do when I see what he can do with the football and how he can keep it and keep our team flowing and play forward and and link the play. Um, you know, we've got some we've got some good players, and I don't think Bradley's the only one. I think you know, Danny Graham to have scored whatever it is nine in ten appearances is is pretty special. Um, and I think the new players, Armstrong, you know, new players settling in after the January window are doing well. Amari was good again tonight, with beating his man and putting balls in the box. Adam scored a goal, and as I've just said, Jack came off and made a big difference. And so, um, yeah, we, we're just ticking along. We're doing okay. Delighted with the points. Well, I think I think teams come here and under, I, 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 I do feel the first 20 minutes every team comes with a game plan and makes life really difficult for us, whether they press us or whether they sit off and try and frustrate. But I think. Eventually, we sort of wear them down. We push them back. We, uh, I think, we've developed a, a style of play where, when we get on top, we can pin teams in their half, and and that Danny lives off service into the box, and um, and he picks up wonderful positions as, as his experience allows him to do, um, and we know he can finish. And so, when the chances come, he's been sticking them in the onion bag, and uh, we're delighted he is. Well, we've done it the other way around. We played, we started like four-two-three-one formation and changed to back three, and had huge success doing that. And um, and tonight, just just a variation again to be able to change formation and give teams who get set in a, in a way of playing against us a different problem. And um, and it was good to give Antonison twenty minutes, half an hour. Good as I said to get Jack on the pitch. Um, and Dominic will be kicking his heels on the bench there but um, yeah listen, we've got some decent options and um, we just have to keep going and we have to try and win matches I don't think we're getting too excited about it I think you know we, we can all see the table and see that we're going to now win three games in hand and they generally win their, their football matches in this league and um, so we shouldn't get too excited I think um, it's just important win tonight I think you know rather than us steaming up behind us and it's important to keep that distance you know seven points feels Pretty comfortable from rather than that means they're going to have to win, you know, potentially three more games more than us. It's uh, it's, um, and I'd like to think we might not lose three more in the last 13. But you know, you, you never know. You can hit a run as we're going to hit a run in the league. Two defeats on the bounce. It's it's it can hit you. It's how you react and keep your nerve and keep going. And there might be a stage where we have to do that as well. And um, I've just said to them there. Listen, they're, they're all very very focused. They all know what's expected. You know you. They, you could feel our support base, how disappointed they were at half time. You know, the team got booed off the pitch at half time, and um, you know, it, 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 the players, the players were a bit frustrated at half time, and yet um, they went out there second half and got the job done. And uh, we have to ex understand and expect that that there's an, a huge expectation at this club to win every game, and, and you know, you can't always do that. You can't always play champagne football. It's it's about getting the job done, and tonight we did.
Neighbor with the gaffers have to say, what's been going on on social media? Well, the fans, the players, and all sorts have been talking. Let's have a look. Derek Williams kicked it all off. Good win tonight. Three points of the clean sheet. Solid performance from the lads. Thanks to the fans that came out. Meanwhile, Elliot Bennett, first half, second half. Way, Dax, fantastic. Win tonight to take us into the last 13 games. Let's keep going together. Meanwhile, Dominic Samuel, top of the league. Nothing else matters. What a good squad we've got. Rovers, Adam Armstrong on flames. My brother Bradley Dax, congrats on the man of the match. Meanwhile, Darren Lanahan, very strappy game tonight. We did what we had to do. Top of the league. It's been a while since we have said that, Rovers. Meanwhile, David Raya said, massive win tonight. Delighted to get clean sheet. Boys were brilliant. Dax on fire and well-deserved man of the match. Meanwhile, Ryan Nayimbi, important three points tonight. Great performance from the boys. On to the next one, Rovers. Let's take a look at what's been going on with the fans. If I can get there, there we go. Callum Atkins said, poor first half, okay second, but really need to get some consistency at home to poor teams. Could have battered them if we got into third gear, but the good thing is we didn't play well and won. Have to do that sometimes when you're up there. So on to Walsall. Meanwhile, Matt Pollitt, also on Facebook, says second home game on the trot where the team selection and how we're set up is completely wrong. As you can see, not all Rovers fans are happy. Trying to accommodate players for some reason, square pegs and round holes. For me, you can't play Corey and Richie together. They haven't got a defensive, defensive split pass between them. Better second half, though, when 4-4-2. Four, four, in fact, despite his negativity, we are top of the league. We should celebrate. We should be in a good mood. Uh, but he did strike some good points there. You, Evans and Smallwood are very similar. Obviously, Smallwood's uh, a better uh, man manager. He'll take care of business. His passing is pretty second rate. Evans, on the other hand, is not as brass as uh, Smallwood, but he probably has better passing. So, you know, with those two, he's maybe trying to get the crunch from uh, Smallwood and the delicacy and the fluff from Evans. But to be honest with you, it doesn't work. You're right, you're spot on there. Uh, maybe, I think Bennett and Smallwood together seems to be a good fit. Anyway, Iceman BRFC. Bit of a strange name. With a South African flag. Anyway, three points ahead of Wigan. Don't care if they play three games left. We have the points in the bag. We just need to win our games and put pressure on them. Meanwhile, Andy Neal, 74. A better result than performance. You think we really need to play at a higher level over 90 minutes against Wigan to have any chance. And with them having games at hand, points on the board are fine. But a draw is no good, really, if we have any aspirations of winning the league. Uh, Emma Douglas said this, well, that weren't pretty, but who cares? Top of the league. Meanwhile, Matthew Grimshaw on Facebook said, big win, pressure's on Shrewsbury now. Uh, as for Ben Knight, also on Facebook, how to make hard work of winning a game. Tony, you've taken some abuse for, for the way you set up for that game. Evans couldn't breathe after five minutes. Top of the league for 24 hours. Uh, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm sensing a bit of negativity from you there, Knight. Uh, meanwhile, Katie Wilson, classy and professional performance from the boys tonight. Excellent result. Top of the league. Uh, Shane Kelly, nice. Top of the league with Wigan winning in the cup at City. Hopefully now Wigan take their eye off promotion. Great night results for BRFC. Meanwhile, Mike Dallop said, we're top of the league. Ignores games played. We're top of the league. Ignores games played. We're Blackburn Rovers. We're top of the league. Screw you. Let me have this. Very... Uh, Comical little addition there by uh, Mike Dallas. Meanwhile, Craig Harden said, short and sweet, that'll do, pig. That will do. Indeed it will do. Now, just in case you missed uh, my preview where I did come over, uh, I did gloss over the uh, League One results. Let's take a sneak peek at the results from the weekend. Plymouth Argyle continuing their hot form. Meanwhile, Charlton, like I said earlier, moved into the playoff spots with a 2-1 win over MK Dons. Gillingham drew 0-0 with Walsall, so they are going to come into the Shrewsbury game uh, not on the back of a defeat. Uh, Blackpool grinded out a 1-1 draw against Peterborough. Uh, where's the most important one? There it is. Shrewsbury lost to Red Hot Rotherham, who... Yes, we've got to keep an eye on, on, on second and third place, but you've also got to keep an eye on Rotherham because they could make a last, a late uh, last minute dot com push up into those promotion places if Wigan and Shrewsbury continue to be sloppy. And I do not want a fourth team in this three team party because that just makes crap a lot more complicated. I think we played Rotherham twice this season, so we don't have to face them again. Uh, I'm not sure if they have to take on Wigan, but it will be nice. If they do, because I don't, I, I think I looked not so long ago at both Drewsbury and Wiggins fixtures, and I didn't see many obstacles. I saw maybe a couple of Bradfords in there. Uh, they're under new managerial ship, and they've really hit a uh, 
hit a bad patch. They've fallen out of the playoff spots where most people, some people anyway, had tipped them for the top two. Check out, look, just take a look at Fleetwood. They are struggling. Uh, recently sacked their manager, Uwe Rosler, coming off the back of a 3-0 away defeat to Doncaster. But word on the street is that Rovers legend, uh, Matt Janssen, could be in line for that job. That would be amazing. I'll keep an eye on their fixtures if that is the case. But hopefully we won't have to meet up with Janssen uh, next season because hopefully we're going to be in a different division and they're going to be in League One. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I also want to give a big shout out to the boys and the guys and the girls at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out that forum, make sure you do so. Give a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers fans from around the world. Uh, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter if you want to check me out on the go. The Tash could be about to come off. If I can work it, maybe work it. Um, yeah, so job done. Top of the league for now. But the next time you see me, things might be different and we might be back into second spot. But either way, uh, the next time you will see me will be the preview video for the Warsaw game, which will be out in about 24 to 48 hours. Depends how stuff goes down off camera. Um, and we take on Warsaw at the weekend at their place. Anyway, I got to get out of here. I got to spin some tracks at my local club. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.